Welcome to Refresh. This is Pastor Kim Robinson. It's my desire that you listen, that you could experience blessed faith and creative life with this Kicks Ministries and Victory Harvest Church podcast. Hi, this is Pastor Kim with the Refresh podcast. This week's title is Arise in the Blessing. And my foundational scripture is Isaiah 60, verse 22. A little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. You know, everyone at some point has felt pressed down and pushed away, unconnected, and they felt so much pressure. So many have felt small and insignificant, unimportant, separated, challenged, frustrated, and even discouraged. And at some point, most have felt like a failure. And even more right now in this season and time, many feel they can't go beyond where they are. You know, there are people who have felt the injustice from so many, including governments and authorities and religion. These have been pressed down, judged, and victims. While these injustices happen, many, many others cannot relate to them. And there are people who have been hurt. There are people who have been treated unfairly. And there are people who have been misjudged, hated, and torn apart. There are also widows and orphans and hungry people. And there are people who people have called successful, and there are many people who are even satisfied. You know, when I wrote the script, Wings of the Wind, and when I directed and produced this movie, it was my desire to show a character. That character was Rose, and she was one who was lifted above everything and everyone that was pressing her down. See, she came to a point as her faith connected with the Lord and his word to rise on the wings of God and to be carried by the wind of his spirit. So goes the title, Wings of the Wind. You know, it's in Malachi where it says that Jesus came with healing in his wings, where he brings wholeness to every area of our lives, spiritually, emotionally, physically, socially, and financially. As we face the challenges before us in this season, we have found ourselves in tough times. And there are many feelings small by comparison to what's pressing them down. So let's look at how Isaiah 60 verse 22 applies to this. You know, a lot of this reminds me when the 12 spies went into the promised land and they came back with the report that they saw themselves as grasshoppers. Well, they saw themselves this way because they saw the giant bigger than themselves. They were so small in comparison because they measured themselves by what was standing before them. What was in their way of receiving the promise and what was in their way of receiving the fullness of the blessing that Lord had given them were the giants they compared themselves to. Well, in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22, it says something so unique about this, the foundational scripture I started with. So let's break it down and take a look at it. First in Isaiah 62, 22, what does it mean when it says a little one shall become a thousand? Well, the word little one is the word katan. And it means least, lesser, small. So this same word katan is used in Genesis 1.16, where it says, And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Here we can see an interesting thing, that the lesser light rules. The sun ruled the day and the lesser light ruled the night. And let's be reminded that this is the moon which reflects the sun. See, the creativity of creation expresses the love of God for us and the gift of God for us and the victory of God for us. This lesser light may seem insignificant, little or small, but on the contrary, it rules. In Isaiah 60 verse 22, it also says that I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Listen to how that reads. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. So, A little one shall become a thousand and a small one, a strong nation, and I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. So to hasten it means that he will hurry it and he will quickly make it happen. But it also means he will enjoy and be excited about doing it and that he will do it. So whatever is happening right in this moment, he is excited and enjoying it. He is rejoicing in it. You know, a lot of people look at it And they say, God will do it in his time. Meaning to say, don't lose hope. God's going to do something. But that's not how it read. It says, I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Well, that time his has to do with you. 
and it has to do with Jesus. In Hebrew, this actually expresses it this way. In his time is defined as an event. It's defined as a specific moment in time, a specific season and a specific purpose of time. It is an event. So this is saying that he is excited and rejoicing to make us a thousand in his event. Well, what was that event? What was the event that took us from being insignificant and pressed down? The event as defined in Hebrew is the occurrence and occasion of Jesus, the cross and the resurrection and what he completed for us to bring us the blessing. This is the event that he has made us a thousand. Well, if he's talking about that insignificant and small people and making them a thousand in and by this event of the cross and the resurrection, what does it mean that we are made to be a thousand? Ayif is the word or Elif is the word to make us a thousand. It means as a company of men under one leader and troops. So who is the leader? Well, his name is Jesus. Who is the company of men which has been set in him, brought by him? It is the body of Christ. It is you individually being a part of a group under his leadership. You know, he goes on to say in Genesis 17, 6, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful and I'll make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. Well, in Isaiah 60, 22, it goes on to say that he will make a small one, a strong nation, which again is in and by this event, which is the fulfillment of the covenant blessing in Jesus. Well, small here is the description of those who've lost their dignity and have been put under and been pressed down. Injustice has been brought and they have been made insignificant. Well, he says he will make a small one, a strong nation. And the word nation here means the nation from Abraham. As the Lord promised, the blessing of Abraham has been given. So he's saying, if you've lost your dignity, he's going to bring you the blessing of Abraham. He's given this to those who've received his fullness through this event. Who is Jesus? And he wants you to receive and arise in this blessing. We're to rise with him. It says in Ephesians 2 that the same spirit that raised him from the dead quickens us and we rise with him. We are the nation, the kingdom that has prom- that was promised to Abraham in the fullness of the event of Jesus, which is the moment in time, the fullness of time, the event that God set into motion to bring the covenant rights to each one of us individually. See, he has taken us and given us his blessing. And again, in Isaiah 60 verses 21 through 22, he says, thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands that I might be glorified. And a little one shall become a thousand and a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord will hasten it in this event of Jesus Christ. See that nation we have become is his people. It's his kingdom. It's the body of Christ. It's found in the blessing of Abraham in Genesis 12, two through three. It tells us all about it there. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. He's made us a blessing to be a blessing. He's given us his blessing that we can give it to others and we can be his light in the earth, a reflection, a one that rules and dominates. The word tells us we're no longer the cursed. We are the blessed. We are no longer under. We are above. We're no longer under the law and the regulations of religion and the regulations of the do's and the don'ts. These things make you small and they put you under. They cause you to lose your dignity. They make you feel insignificant because you can never measure up. See, in the event of Jesus Christ, that moment in time of salvation and the resurrection, the word of God was fulfilled by a covenant that was freely given by faith. Abraham believed before the resurrection took place by faith. And we believe after the resurrection has taken place by faith. 
Righteousness was accounted to Abraham by faith, and he became a friend of God by faith. The blessing came on Abraham because he heard the spoken word, who is Jesus, and he received him and he followed him and embraced him as he submitted himself to him by faith and by love, because Abraham saw his day. It says when he took Isaac to Mount Moriah, that he turned back to those that came with him. He said, my son and I will be back because he knew there was a provision being made. And on that Mount Moriah, he saw Jehovah Jireh, where God spoke to him that he had made the provision. Abraham saw the day of Jesus and by faith, he received what God had done. We can see that day, that event that was done in by him in Jesus. And as we see it and receive it by faith, it is accounted unto us righteousness. As we do the same, we can see the fulfillment of the promise of Abraham in our lives too. This is where he said in Exodus thirty-two thirteen, remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants to whom thou swearest thine own self and setteth said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven and all this land I have spoken of, I will give unto your seed and they shall inherit it forever. You are the seed of Abraham. As we've accepted Jesus Christ, that we have experienced that event being made a thousand, being set in a position under that leadership of God, Jesus Christ and his word, we have been clearly made his righteousness and received his blessing. See, God clearly made good on his promise. The Lord did bring Abraham into a nation called Israel. And he said it in Isaiah 60 verse 22, that he made a little one to become a thousand and a small one, a strong nation. And he hastened it in his time. See, that is a promised place. But the Lord didn't stop there. See, he grafted all mankind in, into this blessing. Those who accept Jesus, because he said it in John three seventeen that he didn't come to condemn the world because it was condemned already. He came to save it. In John three sixteen it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him won't perish, will not suffer, will not be insignificant, will not be pressed down. Because in John 10, 10, it says that he came, that we would have life and have it abundantly. See, all mankind were placed under the law of sin and death by the fall in Genesis with Adam and Eve. That moment of time was changed by the moment of Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection. And by the word that was spoken at that moment, when God gave the covenant promise to Adam and Eve. Well, see that event that moment, that event, his time is the blessing fulfilled. It is ours by faith in Jesus and his word. And it's through him we have been brought into that blessing. Uh, Galatians 3, 9 through 14 says this. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Outside of faith is religion, the law, works, strife, trying to get there, doing it on our own. But all these get you nowhere because Galatians 3 and verse 10 through 11 says this, for as many are of the works of the law are under the curse. These are made small and insignificant, pressed down and have lost their dignity is what that's saying. For it's written, curses everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. See, you could never fulfill everything required from Genesis to Revelation. That's why he sent Jesus. Jesus fulfilled it all. It says in verse 11 that no man is justified by the law of the sight of God. It's evident for the just shall live by faith. It's by faith and not by works. See, Jesus justified the law because he fulfilled it. And he did what we couldn't do. And by faith, we're receiving the fulfilled covenant in Jesus. And we receive everything that Abraham was given. And we receive all all that sealed, signed, and delivered through Jesus, and we receive as Abraham did. See, Galatians 3, verse 12 says this, And the law is not of faith, but the man that does them shall live in them. If you are not living by faith, you are under that law, and it is either pushing you down or you're striving to get up above it. This means if you're trying to receive the blessing by doing something, by working at it, 
It's not going to get you there. Rather than believing, you'll fall under the curse of the law because faith lifts you up above it. Faith in him. Because it says in verse 13 of Galatians 3 that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it's written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. See, that goes on to bring you the revelation that he took it for you. He fulfilled the law. Then on the cross, he took all sin. That is, sin isn't what you do. It's the reason you do what you do. What you do is the fruit of sin. Well, he took that sin, that curse upon him, every single thing. And not only did he take that upon him, he took the results and the fruit of it upon him. Not only did he take the results and the fruit of it upon him, he took the curse and the punishment upon himself. And he rose up that punishment of death, that punishment of all bad things. He rose above and he says that he's given us the blessing. In verse 14, it says that the blessing of Abraham might come on us through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith and be grafted into his nation or into his kingdom, into the body of Christ, into the blessing. So let's look at Galatians 3, 6 through 9. It says this, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. It says in verse eight that the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen or the lost or the ones pressed down or the little one, the small through faith, preached the gospel unto Abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed. All people are blessed by this event that Jesus had accomplished. And verse nine, it says, so then they which be of faith are blessed with faith. Well, Abraham, we are grafted in as one body, the body of Christ. You see, there is a reason that it says the just shall live by faith. Faith is like a diamond. It has so many facets. When the son of God shines through it, the dimensions of faith are brilliant. And to sum it all up, your faith comes by him. So all these dimensions of faith, as the sun shines in, in those facets of that diamond of faith, you will find your faith comes by him. It says this in Galatians 2, 17, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. We are justified by the faith of Jesus Christ. He's the author and the finish of our faith. He's the one that has produced it and has given it. This verse goes on to say that by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And yet it also goes on to say, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. It's not by what you do. It's by what and who you believe in. See, faith comes by the word of God. In John 1, it says that Jesus is the word of God made flesh to us. And if faith comes by the word of God, then faith comes by him who is the word. He is the one that has accomplished all things. The word of God tells us that he has given us a measure of faith that we could believe and receive him. And when we look at the faith of Jesus Christ, we find in Mark 11, when it says, have the faith of God or the God kind of faith and do as he does and speak as he speaks and love as he loves, we can see the depth of faith that we've been given. We could see the depth of faith that we live by. Faith energizes, faith lives, faith breathes, faith speaks, and faith loves, and faith has been given, and faith is yours. And as we embrace that those that have been pressed down and pushed down, have lost dignity, have been brought in, that we don't have to see ourselves as grasshoppers. We don't have to align ourselves up with the circumstances or the situations or that law of sin and death, we line ourselves up with the word of God and we are above and not beneath and we are the head and not the tail and we are made more than conquerors. He has set us in the blessing of Abraham. We are 
to experience the promised land, all the blessing, everything that has been given. Faith is yours. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, arise and shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. He has restored dignity to you. He has made his people in his victory and he has given us the blessing. And we have every promise signed, sealed and delivered in that gracious, beautiful event of Jesus Christ, his death and his resurrection. So arise in the blessing. It belongs to you. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you have brought us and set us in a place that we are not small and that we are not little and insignificant, but you have lifted us up as more than conquerors. And you hasten this in your event, in your moment in time, that was a good moment that you rejoiced over, that you gave your life, rose from the dead, and that as we receive you as our Lord and our Savior and believe what you have done and embrace your word and confess with our mouth the blessing of the Lord, it belongs to us. And I pray each person who hears this podcast can experience that blessing, that you open up that revelation to them, Holy Spirit, that they can embrace all that you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Kim is not only a screenwriter, director, and producer, she writes children's books and other publications. If you're interested in more of her Kix Media from Kix Ministries, check out our family faith-based feature films, Pastor Kim's blogs, and our many children's books and publications at kixtv.com.